G'day mates, today we search for some cactus, excavate a shipwreck, go to the nether, and expand the factory. Let's get started. So welcome back to my playthrough world everyone. I suppose you're all wondering why I'm up here on the windmill tower. Well the answer is, I've been doing some work on the factory base, and here's the result of it so far. Let me just uh, get down so I can show you around, okay? First off, uh, you'll notice that I have a sto storage interface right here for the harvester once we get the super glue. And that is connected to this large item box. I'm planning... Oh, I'll show you what I'm planning in a second. As you can see here, I have a chute leading into a chest, but this is only temporary because I'm planning to use these. Oak drawers. So these should store everything individually so that... Uh, so that I'll have easier access to, to finding them and obtaining them. But in order to automate all that process, I'm going to head to the nether. Something I'm hoping to do later in this session. This particular storage tank here is for any experience, which is why I have zero on me at the moment. Yeah, so any experience I have, I'll dump it in here for later use when it comes to enchanting or repairing my gear. The storage tanks here will be the primary storage point for various liquids, as this one will be temporary. I'm planning to put water in one of them, lava in another, and various other uh, useful liquids in any more subsequent ones. And over here behind this closed door is my little living area. It's not finished as I need to change the floor out, but yeah, that's it. A bit of storage there, a bit more here, a few uh, crafting facilities here, and our furnaces and such here. And through this door we have our animal farms. Chickens, cows, and two lots of sheep. Keeping the two were sheep colors separate from now so that I could automate their shearing later. So the design process for this factory is actually from the corrugated iron factories found here in Australia. So, so hopefully I'm getting the design right using these pillar, these pillar cuts of stone. I've got diorite at the bottom here and it's laid up there. So hopefully hopefully it will all turn out good in the end. So now for my plan this session. I'm pretty sure you all recall my automatic crop uh, harvester uh, test and well you know that the barrels on top didn't stick to the uh, will stick to the gantry. I'm going to fix that today by either find being a swamp or a desert. Why? Well, well, you see, for a swamp I can actually find slime balls that I can battle at night to, in order to obtain slime balls. However, I'm thinking of going to find a desert so that I can find cactus and bring it home and grow myself so I can have an infinite supply of not just green dye but uh, more potential uh, resources from cactus. So to do that now. Also during the week I did a little bit of exploring around here so you can see the areas I've gone to that you haven't seen yet and I couldn't find any deserts or swamps. That's when I realized I have a particular mod installed. The Nature's Compass which as you can see requires logs, saplings and a single compass. Now I've already got the compass, it's in this chest here that I found by a uh, ruined portal, so this is uh, this is all good. And just ignore the golden sword for now, uh, I'll put it away in a second. So all I need to do now is to gather saplings and logs, so let's go cut down a tree. Alright, after cutting down two trees, the first one only dropped one sapling, it's time for me to create the nature's compass. So, this is how you make it. Yep, here we go, and here we are. New nature's compass. This will be able to help me locate some new biomes to explore, so here we go. 
Okay, I found a desert in this direction. 1,583 blocks away. Yep. Oops. Looks like we have an Enderman visitor in the area, but... Well, let's not worry about him now, so let's saddle up my horse, who I still haven't got a name for yet. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me just uh, offload a few of my resources and then we'll head out. Alright, he just mad up my horse, who I still don't have a name for, and let's get going. I feel like I found the start of the desert, but as you can see, it's across some water, and fortunately, horses don't work well in water. So, I'm leaving my buddy here in this village for now while I go up the line. I'll be right back for you, mate. Hang tight. The cow was full. These biomes sort of look the same because, well, they're all the same. This is actually a beach biome, and I still have 900. Uh, blocks to go in this direction, so it looks like I'm hanging out on foot from here. Well, my fault for being a bit too excited, I guess. Okay, I've just looted this shipwreck here, and that reminds me that I still need to excavate that other shipwreck I found before. Probably later this session. Alright, I think this is it, the desert, but as you can see, I've got some company here, and I'm sure this is a hostile mob, so I'll be on guard because there are probably more of these things in the desert, so, oh, how about that, I didn't actually need 
to go into the Disc of the Flying Cacti. There's some right here. Regardless, I have to be careful of that thing. Well, I got what I came for, but before I actually head back, I'll do a quick bit of exploring of the, of the area, and then I'll head back. Can't hurt to uh, see what's actually in the area, right? Well, it looks like my exploration was uh, rewarded, because here's a village here. And I can see right over there is a waystone, which will help me get back to the previous village I was at. Uh... Rockrad. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway. Before I go, I might as well uh, grab a couple of shoots of bamboo here so I can grow them back home. Alright, I pretty much looted all this village and gathered the bamboo I needed, so all that's left to do is to activate this waystone. Mad Salmard. Eh. I've heard weirder in the real world. Anyway, let's head back to... Rukrad. to find my horse. Uh, no, over here. And now, onward home. Okay, on my way back I found this interesting village and, well as you can see, these two buildings don't seem very natural for vanilla Minecraft, so I'll just have a quick look at them before Continuing on home. Okay, there was a reason why those structures were to Minecraft vanilla. These are mine calling these uh, structures. There's a vanilla village nearby. Hopefully, they'll have a waystone that I'll be able to uh, activate and come back here to uh, investigate these further. So, for the meantime, okay, after a quick search, it appears that this village doesn't have a waystone. I'm gonna call them temples, the pedestals, so I'll just do this uh, the old manual way, so... Okay. Time to resume my trip back home. Okay, here we are back home again, so into your hole with you, my friend. Until I build you a proper pin anyway. But, uh, that journey was amazing. Found several new biomes, new uh, resources, new trees. So, all in all, a pretty good haul. Now I'll just come over by the farm here and plant these cacti. Cacti. Wait for them to grow. I also found several new seeds to well to expand the farm a bit, but actually, maybe I could expand it this way. Yeah, I'll expand it that way so the barrels here can still gather the food. Okay, so I just need a few more linear chassis and move this away and get this area right for planting, but I'll do that next time. Now I just need to grind up the two cacti I have left over and make them into lime dye. So, first things first. Put down the, down the waystone I have. I'll... I'll put it... Yeah, so... Name it. Name it base. There we go. And I'll be able to... Well, one thing I'll be able to do is to remove this base marker here. Now I'll be able to teleport uh, to and from... From a lot of places. Uh, now on. Next is the place this millstone here. Plus the cacti. 
here we are. Four pieces of green dye instead of just the normal one we get from smelting it. Now for white dye. Alright, time to go out to the junk chest and grab some bones. I'm pretty sure I have some bones in here. Not. Maybe they're in one of my regular chests. Now here we go. Some bone meal here. Alright, we've got our slime balls now to make the super glue. Got an iron sheet and an iron nugget and two slime balls. I'm sure, I got some of those in storage. Alrighty, now that we've got the super glue, it's time to glue up my harvester. Alrighty. Take two of the test. <gasps> two, one. <gasps> Perfect, it's working now. And. Yep, the barrels are getting filled up. So hopefully, when it gets to the other end of the. Once it gets to the other end of the gantry, all its all its load will be offloaded into the into the chest inside. Okay, I might need to change the design a slight bit, but hey, at least it works somewhat. Am I doing something wrong here, or, or what? I don't know why these aren't connecting. Okay, uh, hopefully this little system I added to the vault will, will fix the the face problem I've been having. Here we go. Perfect, it works! Excellent. Okay, so... Yep, all our items are going into the item vault and all of them are instantly being put into the chest here. Perfect. Once I get the drawer controllers for the drawers here, I'll be able to well, I'll be able to switch up the system and put them all into these storage drawers here. Just need to get the components for that. But until then, I have a ship to excavate. Okay, after some time and six broken shovels, the whole ship is excavated. 
Now I've already had a look and there are three chests on board, but unfortunately my inventory is chockers. So I'm going to have to head back to base and make some space in my inventory for everything in here. Though... So, yeah, I could just... No, that, no, that won't work, that won't work. My inventory is too full for that, so... I'll head back to base, empty my inventory, and be right back. Okay, here's the result of the loot from both the shipwreck and the treasure chest I found. So, now most of these are kind of handy. Oh, whack. Anyway, before I was really interrupted by both the Phantom and that Drowned, yeah, most of these things will come in handy a little later in the yeah. Playthrough, but for now I think I'll go to sleep and skip the night. Alright then, because of this fiddly tank getting overstressed, I think it's time that I go to the nether and capture some blazers. So, first thing I need, the nether portal. But uh, I'm gonna have to find some obsidian somewhere. I mean, Make obsidian with uh, an obsidian generator, but oh well, I'm not that skilled. So I have some diamonds from uh, the shipwreck treasure chest uh, and from an earlier exploration, so I'll just use those. Okay, I have diamond pickaxe and gather up enough obsidian for a portal. So I'll quickly go we go gather the obsidian. Alright, I've got all the obsidian I'll need for the portal, but let's build it. Um, Best, 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 best is to build it on these walls, but well, that wall's going to be for storage, and I'm going to be having pipes running out of this wall, so. Let's. Okay, portal is built. I've got my flint steel with me, and it is lit. Go, great. Few of these, these rose quartz.
so much for using those. Oh well. Blazers. As you saw, I found a bastion, found a few items in the chest, but otherwise, no luck on the blazers this time. So, I be back. So, I'll try again in a little while, but in the meantime, I could start improving my base. So, Start improving my base, so yeah. Okay, so after about a day in real time building all this, I have upgraded the factory, but it's not completely finished. So allow me to show you around. First off, I decide to build up these liquid tanks on the side here. The first one's for water, the second one's for lava, and every other subsequent one I'll be putting onto the side here will be for different liquids, probably some fuel or uh, other sorts of resources, I'm not sure yet. Going inside, you can see that I've removed the tank here, which was replaced by that one up there. Got an infinite lava source upstairs. Improved the steam engine a lot. Added uh, the storage drawers here for the automatic farm. Now I'm using automatic in air quotes cause... well I'll show you once I get outside. Next we have... what? Okay I've lost a bit of the floor here for some reason. I'll have to have a look at that in a minute but uh, here I got a couple of crushing wheels up there working and I have an automatic crafter over here, which obviously isn't um, connected. The reason for that is, well, my steam engines get uh, overstressed when I do connect it, so I'm keeping it disconnected for now until I've got more blaze, um, blaze burners. Yes, I did go to the nether and I actually found a mine fortress that uh, allowed me to capture a few blazers and put them in no, I've managed to put them in here speaking of the nether <coughs> gonna have to find a way to uh, block it off for the time being but uh, yeah, I'll fix up that floor for starters and figure out how to make this completely automated I was playing with the idea of these redstone links and smart observers to do that, but this is what happens when I do that. Yeah, it sticks itself, so I was sticking with the lever until I'm able to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Maybe look to Beardstone for some help? I don't know, I'll figure that all later. Alrighty, time to fix this floor, and obviously I'll need a lot more planks, so... I got some around here somewhere. Pretty sure all you can hear that, right? That means that there's a mob wearing a backpack somewhere in the area. Now I'm guessing that he's on the ground where I am, so I'll start digging down and grabbing it. Thought so, and Okay, 
the backpack and well oh it's an iron backpack okay um, okay let's see what's inside this not bad and uh, another name tag for um yeah, for naming my horse S speaking of I still need to name my horse, and I'm going to be leaving it that up to all you guys. So please, anyone who is watching the video, please place into the comments a uh, appropriate name for my horse here. I'll take all suggestions into consideration and choose the best one out of them. And hopefully this horse lasts a lot longer than Mr. Beardstones does when he names his. Sorry bro. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. Up here as well, I have an enchanting table at the ready for uh, for the enchants I'll be needing in the future. And as you can see, I have a lot of negative space up here and several more downstairs. Up here, I was thinking of uh, putting some bog blasting, bog washing, and bog haunting stations for when I need to get the resources applied from using those particular methods. But in the meantime. I think I should uh, focus on finishing up building this factory. I'm almost at the other side of this river here, so once I get to that I'll be able to build build the factory even more and even have a roof on top. But until then I think I should... So let's crack on with it I guess. I just realized something while I was halfway through completing this floor here. I have nearly all the materials required to build an automatic boring machine, similar to the one that Mr. Beardstone and uh, Foxy No Tail use. So, I'll be doing that next episode. But until then, I'm telling you all to stay too true, Blue.